Late in the day on Tuesday, when Nevada Senator John Ensign called a press conference in Las Vegas, the news that he was announcing he'd had an affair registered about a 4.0, say, on the political Richter scale. Significant damage unlikely, though you may sense some moderate shaking. That's how it felt initially. Not that big a deal. But it turns out this wasn't a short, sharp shock. It turns out this is one of those prolonged earthquake experiences in which the aftershocks do way more damage than the initial kachunk. The initial announcement from Ensign, backed up by a statement by his office, was that the senator had conducted an affair from December 2007 through August of last year with a campaign staffer who was married to a man who worked in his Senate office. So both the woman he was sleeping with and the man she was married to were on Ensign's payroll. A personal failure, to be sure, which the senator himself proclaimed, and an ethical fiasco, given that both of these people worked for him. Also, a hypocrisy problem, given Senator Ensign's demands that President Clinton resign because of his affair with Monica Lewinsky, and Senator Ensign's demands for the resignation of Larry Craig, after Senator Craig got nabbed in the now-famous wide stance in the men's room public sex sting. But the personal failure, the ethical issue, and the hypocrisy problem were all evident right away on Tuesday. Those were the initial shock. The aftershocks, the subsequent reporting about this scandal, uh, they've been even worse. NBC News has reported that on the day he announced that he'd had the affair, Senator Ensign explained to other senators that the reason he was coming forward about the affair now was because his ex-mistress was trying to extort money from him. The same claim, always anonymous but remarkably similar in language and in tone, was made to the Associated Press, Fox News, Politico.com, the Las Vegas Review Journal, and the New York Times. This claim that his ex-mistress's ex husband, who is also a former employee of Senator Ensign, had demanded a substantial sum of money from the senator, and that's what prompted his public revelation. Here's the problem with that claim. Extortion is a felony. Extortion of a United States senator is the kind of felony that's likely to get a lot, of, a, a lot of law enforcement attention. But local authorities in Las Vegas and the FBI claim that no reports of an extortion attempt were ever made to them, nor are they investigating any claims of extortion against Senator Ensign specifically. Today, as picked up on by Zachary Roth at TPM Muckraker, the extortion claim was replaced by another still anonymous claim, sourced this time to Senator Ensign's staffers, that the reason the senator had to go public now was because his ex-mistress and her husband were not trying to extort money. That's the old story. The new story is that they had approached a television news network about publicizing the affair, and that's why he had to go public now. The shifting and anonymous explanations for the senator's timing in coming forward were emerging today alongside new details about the employment history of the senator's ex-mistress and the employment history of her family. In 2007, when her affair with Senator Ensign began, Cynthia Hampton was employed at Ensign's Battleborn Political Action Committee. She was earning about $1,400 a month. Once the affair with the senator got underway, her salary was doubled to nearly $2,800 a month. At the same time, Ms. Hampton was also employed by Ensign's campaign committee. Again, around the time the affair began, her salary at the campaign committee doubled from $500 a month to $1,000 a month. Even more remarkably, during the time that Senator Ensign and Cynthia Hampton were having an affair, <sighs> John Ensign was the head of the National Republic Republican Senatorial Committee. That's the part of the Republican Party responsible for electing and re-electing Republican senators. For the record, depending on how the Coleman-Franken thing turns out, while Ensign was the, at, at, at the helm of the NRSC, the Republican Party lost eight, maybe nine seats in the Senate. But anyway, while he was head of the National Republican Senatorial Committee, and while he was carrying on, carrying on an affair with Cynthia Hampton, the National Republican Senatorial Committee found it in its heart to also put Mrs. Hampton's 19-year-old son on the Republican Party's payroll. The National Republican Senatorial Committee, then chaired by John Ensign, paid his mistress's 19-year-old son $5,400 over a period that started four months into the affair between Senator Ensign and this young man's mother and ending the month that the affair ended. The National Republican Senatorial Committee today confirmed to us that Cynthia Hampton's 19-year-old son was listed on the organization's expenditures. They then referred all further questions to Senator Ensign's office. 
For the record, the 19-year-old was supposedly being paid for research policy consulting. Despite the involvement in this scandal now of the actual Republican Party and its fundraising and campaign arms, Republican senators are not exactly falling all over themselves to weigh in on the matter. Senator Kyle said, I'm not going to say anything. Senator Grassley said, it would be intellectually dishonest for me to comment. Senator Gregg said, it's a personal matter. Senator Crapo said, I'm going to reserve comment. Senator Collins said, I don't have a comment right now. Senator Vitter, he said, uh, I'm late. He actually said, I'm late, Senator Vitter. Uh, the John Ensign scandal, it seems, is just getting started. If Republican senators try to ignore this the way they've tried to ignore David Vitter after his prostitution problem, does that mean that the Democrats can pass any old gay rights legislation they want without fear of family values moralizing from the wide stance side of the aisle? Joining us now is Anna Marie Cox, national correspondent for Air America Radio and contributor to Playboy magazine. Hi, Anna Marie. Nice to see you. Good to see you, Rachel. Um, Senator Ensign has resigned his leadership job in the Senate, but he has not resigned from the actual Senate yet. Do you think that he will? No, I don't. Um, uh, I think also, I, I'm not sure if he should resign over the affair. Um, however, this favoritism is kind of an issue. And, you know, there's a word for when you pay the people you sleep with. And I'm trying to think of what it is. But anyway, maybe David Vitter can help David us out Vitter. later. It's yeah, I know. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, if he's not going to step down from the Senate, I mean, most Republican senators aren't commenting on uh, on this at all. A few Republican senators are saying positive things about him. They both happen to be his roommates. Uh, Tom Coburn said <laughs> he's a bright young man and lots of people Who make mistakes. Who knows what he brought home to the apartment, but anyway, yeah. go ahead. Uh, Jim DeMint <laughs> said he's a great leader and he hopes Ensign will stay in the Senate a long time. Is that just roommate privilege? Like you just don't talk smack about the people who you share a chore wheel with or are, they, are people really gonna support him? <laughs> well, uh, you and I have talked before about how the, the, the Senate is a very exclusive club and once you're in it's really hard to get kicked out of it and I think that's one of the things you're seeing here um, and also Rachel I have to say I mean you were making the point about um, whether or not they would the family values coalition would have a hard time making making a stance wide or not um, on that issue now having had some some fairly prominent people uh, embroiled in these uh, extramarital affairs I have to say I think that people who are against marriage equality and against um, repealing don't ask don't tell have a very um, tin ear for hypocrisy or else they wouldn't have those feelings at all. Now, it'd be one thing, and I think this would be a really kind of amazing and amusing thing for, for us, if Ensign could prove that it was gays getting married that caused him to have the affair. Oh, that's brilliant. Like, his marriage was diluted, and therefore it was so. Strayed? It was like everything was going great, and then the gays started to marry. And all of a sudden, you know, the lady looked really good, and he started paying her twice as much. Was, you understand. You understand. <laughs> I would love to see him try to pull that off. I would absolutely love that. But okay, well, let, let's get to the issue, though, of the of, of the money in this case. If the Republican right. Party put Ensign's mistress's son on the payroll, if he doubled his mistress's <laughs> salary what? paid by campaign funds while she was sleeping with him, this is such a bigger scandal than Larry Craig. I don't see how they can avoid turning on him if it involves that literally Republican Party money. I think they're going to have to at least do an investigation. I mean, I think this does look very, very poor. And again, I, I think Americans are, to their credit, pretty live and let live when it comes to, to people's personal lives and to what goes on in the bedroom. That's why most Americans are for repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and a lot of Americans are for marriage equality. Um, but when you start to pay the people that you're sleeping with, that's a problem. And when you start to use government money or sort of uh, taxpayer money, at least, the people who are trying to support a political cause to do that kind of thing, that's something I think we can all get upset about, even if we're not upset about the affair itself. I mean, that, that is is really problematic. I think the affair itself is utterly unnewsworthy, except for yes. the fact that he has been advancing his political career on the backs of calling for other people to resign who do exactly the same thing. There is one piece resign. of news news that's, that's newsworthy about that affair, which is that some Republican in the country got someone to sleep with him, <laughs> which I think for a lot of Republicans, considering the state of the party right now, is probably really good news. I'm just going to leave that exactly where it lies. Anna Marie Cox, national correspondent for Air America Radio, contributor to Playboy magazine. It is always a pleasure and an implicit threat to have you here. Thanks for being here. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. <laughs>